joined the Navy when I was 17. And I was, I retired, I was medically discharged, I should say, from the SEAL teams. I served my country with America's best in a time of war. And I had the honor of leading them. But I did lose, you know, my swim buddy, which is my, the guy you go through SEAL training with. And that gave me a survivor's guilt that I can't begin to describe. And, you know, I make it through combat in multiple firefights and nothing. I, I got blown up by an IED, it broke my neck, you know, and I didn't know it at the time. But, but I lived with that for like five years, make it through all of that. And they, I come back and they almost kill me with pills. The almost inevitable result of a psychiatric diagnosis is a prescription for a psychiatric drug. There's very little else psychiatrists do, and they've been prescribing a lot. From 2005 to 2011, the U.S. Department of Defense increased its prescriptions of psychiatric drugs by nearly seven times. That's over 30 times faster than civilians. The drug push is no different for veterans. Depression is a disease. We get this guy from the Veterans, I think the Veterans Administration or something like that. And he's basically telling you, if you are depressed, if you do something erratic, it's a disease. It's a, I mean, this is, this, this guy's literally the loudest guy in the entire briefing. You know, very just in your face about it. And he's just basically saying, you know, if you're doing anything other than what you normally do, you, you have a disease and you need, to, you need to be put on the system, you need drugs. We can control it with medication. And then right after that, they're gonna get prescribed whatever drug the psychiatrist seems fit rather than just being able to talk to somebody. No therapy, no lifestyle change. It's, it's a straight line of how they educate these doctors in pharmacology, a symptom to a drug. Psychiatrists have no real idea of what their drugs are doing to the human body. But when it comes to handing them out, that hardly matters. My older brother um, got out of the Marine Corps, like I said, about a year ago. And when he went to the VA um, hospital to make his disability claim and uh, talk to him, he told him that he had uh, trouble sleeping. And he didn't tell me what, he, what they gave him, but he basically said they gave him a big bag of happy pills. So I came home on R&R &R from Iraq and got severely depressed. And they went and told me to go see Don-based um, psychologist, which then they prescribed me meds. He basically told me what was wrong with me and uh, prescribed me with so aloft, and uh, that was pretty much it. I have know that I've been on um, Ambien, Seroquel, Paxil. That was one of the big ones. A very dangerous drug that I I'm just think is very harmful called Abilify. It kind of puts whatever meds you're on on steroids. Welbutrin, Zoloft, Modafinil, Methylphenidate, um, Trazodone, Prezacin, and Ambien. Starts out with Dexedrine, Vibrid, Dalmain, Salopram, Thorazine, Citalopram, Prozac, 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 and effects are at the same time. Stelazine, Zoloft, Compazine, Seroquel, Cogentin, Abilify, Nodular, Rubrucin, IV Amitol, Depakote, Artane, Xanax, Helperidol or Haldol, Clonopin, Tamazepam, Adderall, and Librium. Five milligrams to 300. 300 milligrams. 1,200 milligrams of lithium a day. Most individuals who would be given these, these drugs have no clue what the drug is, really, or what it can do to the mind, really. They just don't know. So they're, it's, it's, it's a blind date. And it's, uh, and sometimes it turns out to be kind of an ugly one. The drugging of the military is off the charts, especially in the United States. In total, over the last 10 years, 
the U.S. government has spent more than $4.5 billion just medicating soldiers and veterans. In fact, in 2011, the Pentagon spent more on pills, injections, and vaccines than on Black Hawk helicopters, Abrams tanks, Hercules C-130 cargo planes, and Patriot missiles combined. The use of both psychiatry and psychotropic drugs has just ballooned in the U.S. military. Every soldier that I've talked to, every time they've seen a psychiatrist, they would prescribe them some kind of psychotropic drug right off the bat. I would say 60 to 70 percent of the soldiers we saw in our, in our center uh, were on medication. Let me give you an example. I was on a, uh, on a committee, a scholarship committee for veterans at a, at a college, and they invited the VA psychiatrist to come in to give a talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. But at the very end, I raised my hand, they said, how many of your veterans that you see do you medicate? And initially, he tried to skirt the answer. He said, I see the most difficult. And I said, we all see the most difficult. How many do you medicate? 98%. It's criminal. And it isn't much better in the rest of the world. I deal a lot with a lot of our soldiers within our NATO brothers and sisters. Canada, New Zealand, Australia, UK, um, Germany, France, Belgium, and even soldiers down in Italy and even in Spain. Each and every one of them have complained about the issues dealing with psychotropic drugs with them. I was stationed in Germany for a while. I was in Kosovo for a while. And uh, they had talked about that, yeah, when they see the psychiatrist, they do give them psychotropic drugs. So it seems like it's a worldwide problem. A lot of our veterans have told us that when they went for help whilst they were still serving, they were then prescribed medication. It didn't help. Quand on envoie un patient chez un psychiatre, il ressort directement avec des molécules chimiques. Et ça, on commence à avoir les effets secondaires et on commence à avoir les problèmes. Исправді, психіатри давали військовослужбовцям небезпечні наркотики, при цьому знаючи, що військовослужбовці мають у руках небезпечну зброю. О, nonstans. Så finns det ju någon drivande orsak till att vi skriver ut mer och mer piller, men vi får ju inte det förväntade resultatet. But no matter the country, this is the military. And in the military, Soldiers have no choice but to follow orders. When I'm wearing this uniform, if I'm ordered to see a psychiatrist, I have to go to see a psychiatrist. Um, it, if I'm not in this uniform, I can tell them no. The suggestion to go see the psychiatrist came across as a, a heavy recommendation. It wasn't a direct order, but it was, this is something you should go do. It's something that needs to be handled. You should go do this. And then there's the pressure put on you to take the drugs. I actually asked my commander that. I said, do I have to take these drugs if it's an, is this an order? And they all just stared at me, wouldn't give me a no or a yes, imply that I'm supposed to take this. I would have refused. I probably would have lost my rank or lost opportunities in the military because I wasn't taking care of the property of the military, which was my body. Most of the troops that I talked with did not want to take the psychiatric drugs, did not want them, did not need them, and rebelled at having to take them. But they were told that if you don't take these drugs, you can't get your compensation, and you can't get any more VA treatment if you deny the drug usage. So they did. I have heard that military personnel have been ordered to take these drugs. My response to that is, that's an illegal order. And I had that verified by a judge advocate general right here in Washington, D.C. It's illegal to demand that. If a psychologist tells you that you have to take it or you're going to lose your benefits, you need to report that psychologist to the proper authorities. Officially, one in six American service members is on at least one psychiatric drug. But here's the thing. According to the Armed Services Committee of the United States Senate, no one knows how many drugs are given to soldiers downrange. There's no paper trail, no prescriptions. They're just handed out. Fact is, the amount of psychiatric drugging in the military is probably much, much higher. 
particularly when so many qualify for psychiatry's biggest diagnosis drugging combo of all.